Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Anchor Star Wealth Morning Show. We have three topics for you this morning. First of all, is one of our favorite topics because it's our favorite stock. Well, okay, it's number one in the books. So you have to it's our favorite. But with new news going out on Apple, there was an announcement this morning. We had earnings last Thursday. Well, Mike's going to talk about Apple, where they are, where they're going. And uh, there's a big stock buyback out there. They increased their dividend, all kinds of, they're doing all the right things. Uh, and he's going to peel back the, some of the numbers for the quarter as well. In addition, we talk stock buybacks. Um, and Mike's going to talk about that as kind of a separate topic on, you know, kind of how that works. It's good to go through that every now and then, but that also, you know, helps you as a shareholder uh, because it changes the dynamics and he'll walk you through uh, the math there. And then I'm going to talk about what nobody wants to talk about because, you know, he's the good cop. I'm the bad cop. I'm going to talk about the national debt because I kind of find ourselves talking about this uh, often. And here's how the conversation goes. I met with a couple of clients yesterday. It's the same thing. It's inflation is still really kind of there and then the debt and what are you know if we're printing more money to service the debt where's that going to take us in the long run it's good uh, yeah well we're, we'll talk about that and there's there's some interesting solutions out there and you know one of them is print some one trillion dollar coins so i'm going to just touch the surface on that because i don't really have my brain around it but it's a fun topic to at least talk about so that's what we've got for you today this is the financial education presentation so you have to do your own due diligence for acting upon anything you hear in this show more disclaimer information is available at anchorstarwealth.com and the opinions expressed are mine and mike's alone with that let's start with the good news Apple, Mike, what do you got? <laughs> yes, it is good news. Now, now, if Apple had come out with bad news, would I be the bad cop today? I don't know. <laughs> Probably. And then Steve would have to be the good cop. So uh, last Thursday, Apple came out with earnings. And I know many people had questions like, is it time to start selling Apple? Have they officially dropped out of the Mag 7? Oh, my gosh. Uh, should I should I switch? from my Apple iPhone to, I don't even know, something else, the <laughs> Motorola Razor. Should we bring back the Razor? There's all these questions going on. So Apple's earnings came out and as the largest uh, stock in our book, it was good news because it was immediately up 7% last Thursday, you know, and, and we saw that reflected in Friday's uh, share price. You know, what were the earnings? Uh, $1.53 versus $1.50. That doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're talking a uh, 2.8, trillion dollar company that's a lot uh revenue 90.75 billion versus expectations of just 90 billion wow i mean <laughs> these are huge huge numbers the biggest number are two two numbers that i really paid attention to that i that really stood out to me and one is gross margin so the gross margin stated 46.6 percent you know versus that was what was estimated that is that's huge because that means they're still printing money with their products. They're still making lots and lots of money. When gross margin starts to decline, you start getting in price wars and you start dealing with a commodity. And that's not the business we want to be in. Airlines, commodities, uh, different. Do you see anything that's a commodity where there's multiple sellers of the same thing? Uh, it's price wars. But, um, you know, on news that I would say didn't sound as great, you know, iPhone sales were down 10% just because of the, the product life cycle. But overall, you know, that it's still considered a, a definitely an earnings and sales beat versus expectation. The other big number, and, and this is it, Apple authorized $110 billion dollars a share in repurchases and stock buybacks 110 billion there are uh, there's only maybe uh, i don't know a thousand companies that are worth over 110 billion so they're, they're authorizing to buy that back i did the math on it if it's a 2.8 trillion dollar company that's about a four percent buyback so they're taking four percent of their shares off you know off the purchase um or off the shelf and then when you calculate earnings against it, your earnings go up. So basically, if you hold the stock, you know, it kind of gets you an automatic 4% mathematically. Um, let's take a look at the stock price. Here's the stock price over the last month, which, of course, you'd say, wow, that's great. It's up significantly. <laughs> But we got to look a little more deeper than that. I mean, uh, people have been asking about Apple since the beginning of the year. So let's look at it since the beginning of the year. It's 
almost back to right where it started the year at. So, so we went through a decline uh, during April or March and April. A lot, of, you know, people were asking, should we still be in Apple? And and obviously that's turning out to be yes. Um, let's look a little longer. It's looking like a five-year chart. You can see that up significantly in the last five years. You know, you could say 50 to 183. Uh, you know, three and a half times your money. And then of course, since Steve's had it in the book for many, many years, you can see the great parabolic chart showing Apple as a great investment. So let's talk more about buybacks because $110 billion. So when you think of a stock, like a company like Apple, that basically when you have $110 billion of cash, like you, ha you have that much money, you can do different things with it. You could invest it in new products to be released. And if the ROI is significantly, you know, 10, 20, 30 percent with Apple, 46 percent gross margin, and you have those kind of pro uh, projects, you want the company to invest that money to, to get 46 percent, those kind of things. But at some point you have so much cash. What do you do? You can acquire another company. That's another option. You can pay it out in a dividend to your shareholders or the option is you can buy back your stock. So I found this graph and this shows Apple's earnings per share. The blue line is their, their net income. So this is how their net incomes went up, but by purchasing shares back, their earnings per share go up. So this is the, the scale is the percentage increase. So this is the effect of buying back a stock and Apple's done this over the years many times. So, you know, that's just kind of an idea and something to think about. So why don't companies just always buy back stocks? So, so as I said, if it's a smaller company and, and I would say, hey, we could put that money to better use and earn, a, you know, create a new product or whatever, definitely they should do that. That's what we want as owners of the company them to do. If we're a company like, let's just say like a AT&T or a Verizon where they've got lots of cash coming in, you know, I'm not sure how many new products they can really put out. You know, we like a heavy dividend. That's a, that's another option. So, um, and, and then the the key is how is it taxed? That's another piece because because if if you can make the sh the the stock go up in price, and uh, you as the owner don't pay taxes on that until you sell the stock. You know, we like it. It's almost like deferred taxes. Whereas if you pay dividends, you pay tax of that year. But the government figured this out. They figured this out. We can't just let people buy back stocks. So a few years ago, they put in a 1% tax on share repurchases. And, you know, what is 1.5 or what is 1%? That turns out to be 3.5 billion in the first half of the year, last year. And it's interesting because, uh, you know, for this is for the overall S&P 500. And, you know, that, that may sound like that's a lot of money. But when they make $169 billion in stock buybacks, it, you know, sadly, you know, $1.6 billion is not a lot. Or, or you know, the, the numbers, it's kind of like, even though that's a ton of money to us, but overall, not that much. But think about it. The government gets to receive that. So that's that's more tax to the government. Bet you most people did not realize that stack, stock buybacks are, purchase, are are taxed like that. So that's kind of the you know minor bad news. It's only one percent. Not doesn't feel like a big deal. Certainly not enough of a reason for Apple not to buy theirs back. But let's go on. Apple. More good news on Apple. So today they are making an announcement about their new iPad. In fact, I think I just saw the video re was released, yep. but I haven't seen it yet. I saw this article, it's, and this was from a couple days ago, Apple's new iPad Pro should turn the device into the true laptop. So I pulled out, you know, this is the uh, version <laughs> two of, of an Apple iPad. I purchased this to score my kids' baseball games uh, what was it, 12, 13 years ago, and, and it worked great for that. Um, other than a, a little time that I got into Clash of Clans for like six months, and then I was out, I haven't used that iPad for much else. I mean, so so whether it's a true laptop replacement, I, I will tell you that I can look to my left and I've got 
a real laptop with Intel and NVIDIA chips in it. And I love the power laptop I've got over here. I have not been able to turn my, my iPad into a laptop. However, that's me personally. What I have noticed is as I deal with people that come to my front door to have me sign this or that, or, you know, they're using iPads or they're using some kind of a pad. Um, so there's a great business use for iPads. And it's not to replace the laptop, at least that I've seen. It's more to, you know, provide signature, look at documents, sign offs. You know, it, it's certainly more durable, less expensive than a laptop. So there is a use for it. Now, let me show you this next slide here. If I can bring this up here, I'm going to close this. And what we've got here is the announcement about the iPad Air that just came out today. So watch the video. That is that is Tim Cook praying this product works well. So <laughs> he's I, I don't know why they put that there, but but that's what it looks right, like right. to me. Yeah. So he's praying this 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 launch goes well. And if I went back to the earnings, the Apple does report out iPad specific earnings, and actually that was a little bit lower than expected. But you know, this this iPad is coming out today. Um, you know, we'll see what the reaction is from the market on that. But more importantly, and I believe, is their worldwide conference is coming up June 10th through 14th. And what I look at is this is where we will see Apple stock make a move, hopefully to the positive significantly or not. But this is where we're going to start to evaluate Apple because they're going to announce lots of new products uh it's kind of let me scroll to the top this is their uh worldwide developers conference invite only they have not invited me yet um but anyways tim cook has signaled at the company's shareholder meeting in february that they are making significant investments in generative ai and they plan to disclose more and this has been the knock on apple this year is you know we haven't seen the great you know generative ai Steve has talked about this in the past. Apple is a fast and excellent follower. I mean, they do come out with some new products, but what they do is they usually come out things just a little bit later and they're excellent. So we'll see what they come out with. We'll, we'll see at this uh, developer conference. So that's it. Good news on Apple. Um, hopefully we'll continue to see that going forward. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Thanks, Mike. A lot, a lot to unpack there. And another thing uh, that you've talked about for too is Apple's a secretive firm, so you know they don't they don't they don't forecast these things. So just like we didn't know we were we kind of knew we were getting a new iPad today, but didn't know the technicalities though the M4 chip. I'm not a chip guy, but evidently that's a really fast chip, uh, the best and the brightest. Um, but yeah, well, so their AI is obviously uh, that's going to be the catalyst for the stock to go higher. And when you think when you look at that parallel chart that Mike put up of, yeah, you know, 10, 15, 20 years, uh, how can it possibly go higher? Well, stock buybacks are one of the ways to do that. So, they, you know, and it's funny because it's not funny, but the, the government, so, you know, you, you think of what's better, a dividend or stock buyback? Well, it depends, right? If you need money, if you need cash flow, then you want the dividend. Uh, but if you don't, then you don't want the dividend because you don't want taxed on it, like Mike talked about. But there were so many companies that were starting to do stock buybacks instead of increasing the dividend that Uncle Sam said, now, what Uncle Sam says and what Uncle Sam thinks are two different things here. They said that that's taking advantage of shareholders. Clearly not, that's making us more money, but taking advantage of us by not paying out profits to these poor, lowly shareholders like all of us that own shares. Um, and, you know, it's like what, it, but really what they're, so they say this, but what they're really thinking is, we don't get the tax receipt now, now, right? Because people aren't selling. So they cried BS on that and threw the 1% out there and it's probably going higher. Uh, especially if Biden gets reelected, that is one of the big tax reforms that they're looking at taking up to like 3% or so. So kind of bogus, but the government does need to make money because uh, I'm going to talk about like the debt situation, which is not good. So let me share a screen out here for you. Um, this is the, if you haven't seen this in a while, if you want to get, if you're ever having a good day and want to get depressed, go to usdebtclock.org because it will ruin your day. There's so much going on on this on this page that there's there's too much, right? So focus on the upper left. <laughs> and it's all in bright red. 
uh, you know, so the national debt, 34 trillion, suppose this is real time. I don't know how that would be tracked, but uh, you know, it, it's, it's, you know, within a trillion, right? Uh, so 34 trillion, which, you know, that's, that's how many 12, 14 digits. That's kind of beyond comprehension a little bit. Most people can't think it's like, you can get your mind around a billion uh, trillion. It's like, Ooh, that's way up there. If you go to debt per citizen, it's like, okay, Hey, let's solve this. Right. What are the way outs? The government comes in and says, OK, we're going to make this right. Everybody just uh, pay one hundred three thousand one hundred twenty four dollars. Just cut that check real quick and we'll be square. Uh, and yes, that means your newborn has to cut the check, too. Yep. Yep. Your ninety nine year old has to cut. The check. Yep. If you're alive, you're paying. Right. Or you're like, oh, that wouldn't be fair because we're all about being fair. Right. So let's just target taxpayers. And then it would just be like, why don't we just stroke a check for 266K, almost 267, might be 267 by the time I'm stopped talking, but let's just stroke a check and make this right. And you're like, well, the government would never do that. Well, first of all, don't forget governments can, can literally do whatever they want, whether they're going to or not. Um, Greece did a, if you remember austerity and Greece and the riots, and I don't remember the year now, uh, it's been a while, but yeah, they did a 10% haircut across all retirement accounts, like today, like you're not, you're 50 and you're not retiring, but you got everybody owes 10% of their retirement accounts today. Obviously that was uh, not, uh, People were not happy about that. Um, in America, I don't know, how, what's the answer? So you have people that, you can't, it's a spectrum, right? So you have the, it doesn't, debt doesn't matter. We can pr print our money and service the debt. So can we really be in debt to ourselves if we can print money to wipe it out? That's a good theory. So when you do that though, you run into other issues like inflation, everything gets like ridiculously expensive, which we're battling uh, to, to have that not happen. Or you have the, you know, we're gonna fix this over time and everybody's like, okay, you're right. We're all adults, right? We elect adults, the sarcasm here, but you know, if we did elect adults and somebody would say, okay, let's fix this over the course of 20 years, reasonable number, but not when you do four year terms. Um, but you know, it's like take 20 years and figure this out and we'll get, you know, we'll, we'll fix our country. So we're not handing this, this debt bomb uh, to our children. Um, it's kind of like tomorrow's diet or tomorrow's workout. Uh, tomorrow can slide a lot. Uh, so in four year terms, tomorrow always slides, right? So it'll be just next term, we'll figure this out. Uh, so that's really not going to happen. And then there's of course to solve it all at once where you just, uh, you know, uh, tax your citizenry and they have to pay. Otherwise we're gonna throw them all in jail, which obviously they can't do. Um, so there's a real problem here. I mean, it is a, it is a, it is a real problem. Um, when you look at jet, excuse me, uh, debt to GDP. So at the, I think I can make my arrow show up here. Right here is kind of your big number. Uh, we're over 120%. I don't have the study in front of me, but there's almost no way out. Uh, I mean, it's uh, almost everybody who's gone over 120% has ended up in a war. Um, so another way to get out of this is to not honor the, uh, the debt that that we have and just say nope not doing it not paying obviously china would be a little upset with that and then we start you know flinging things back and forth at each other which is also not good um so who knows but some people out there there's some interesting theories and if you've heard this uh you'll you'll have to just laugh it's like okay tell you what why print all these dollars and hundred dollar bills and if you didn't know the hundred dollar bill is the largest printed printed bill physical bill in the world there's more hundreds than there are ones. Okay, why is that? Because the store of value, all the reserves, all that is in the U.S. hundred-dollar bill. Um, you know, we, you know, back. Uh, I spent some time in uh, over Iraq, not on the ground, but uh, when we were over there as a country, you know, we were finding, you know, safes full of hundreds. Right, hundreds are like the thing. Uh, well, there is like that's expensive to print all those hundred-dollar bills. So why not come up with a trillion-dollar coin? Now. All these studies, just hit this on Wiki. I'm not gonna go into it. I'm not gonna pretend to know exactly what I'm talking about here, but here's all the press this trillion dollar coin has gotten. Wow. Okay, so it's it was realistically being considered in 2013. Uh, so if kind of, you know, and the, the treasury, it's like the government issue it, the treasury will buy it. Mike's flashing a Bitcoin I can see in the, the background there. No, that's not a real Bitcoin. That's not a real thing, but Mike tells everybody it is, so he's, he's cool at the clubs on Friday nights. But the uh, but yeah, so, you know, we print a trillion dollar coin and then the Fed buys them from the U.S. government. 
And that's part of the, you know, here's your 2011 paper that talks about how all this would work. Okay. Well, if you think $11 for your Egg McMuffin and, you know, at McDonald's is bad or your $5 uh, burrito at Taco Bell or where whatever your fast food restaurant of choice, or if you're going out, you know, the, to eat a lot, that normal $30 to $40 meal is now a $40 to $50 meal. And, of course, if you're not tipping anywhere from 18 to 25%, then you're, uh, you know, you get glared at while you walk out of the restaurant. So, I mean, things are going up. Uh, and just imagine if we started uh, punting out 25 to 50 uh, trillion dollar coins and throwing that in the mix. Uh, so uh, I, I do joke, but to, to kind of bring back to seriousness. So what's what's the hedge out there is you look for a money that's not tied to a to a individual government, right? The true separation of you know government and money. And there's only one option that I know of, and that's Bitcoin. Um, so I will leave it at that because that's a whole nother Pandora's box to go down. Um, but yeah, when you look, you know, you sit back especially in you know mike and i's world and we get we're going to a conference next week and you know it's like what's the next big thing what what can cause you know what's going to derail the economy and everybody just kind of looks at each other and says national debt it's just the debt and you know it's kind of what i tell people you know is like if you go into the bank and you want to borrow a million dollars maybe your bank can do that maybe they can't if you you know but if you don't if you borrow a million and don't pay it you have a problem uh, if you borrow 100 million, well, the bank probably won't won't be able to write that anyway. But if 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 you borrow 100 million from your local bank and you choose not to pay, the bank has a problem. You don't have a problem. You're like, mm, can't pay. Um, you know, the the bank is out the money. Uh, so the, these are, you know, when the national debt was a trillion or two, it was kind of like, okay, this is uh, not good, but we can fix it. When it gets over from like three to ten trillion, then it's like, okay, this is painful. We have to do something about it. And as soon as it went over ten trillion, it just, it, you know, now, now we're like numb to it, right? Like, well, we'll worry about that tomorrow. So anyhow, there's your downer topic of the day. Uh, so uh, to go back to your upper topic of the day, take a look at that new Apple iPad Air video with the M4 chip. It's supposed to replace your laptop. Who wouldn't rather carry a, ta a tablet around than a laptop? So uh, I'll have to check that out here soon. So with that, I'm going to let you guys go, and we'll be back with you tomorrow morning. You guys have a good one. Bye.